Hi, I'm Janie. Welcome back to the Lee Kempner House. It is crunch day. It is eight o'clock. Ricardo is already here and unloading. We have a very, very busy day today. We are under the gun. We are behind schedule. My grandkids came to visit, which is great, but they brought the crud and gave to me and my husband. So I've been out of commission for a while and then had a root canal. So I'm very draggy today, but I'm going to try to help as much as I can but we're under the gun because the sting pump festival is coming up in just five weeks and we do not have working toilets yet and david kona our plumber needs to come put some plumbing up here to connect that pink bathroom but there's demolition that has to go on first and we're open for tours at 10 o'clock today so we've got to get this done and get it cleaned up and then there's some pl oh come on don't don't pause on my account um, but then there's some plaster damage that we have to fix too that happened earlier this week that is worrisome from a safety standpoint so we're going to make a big mess in this area and in the receiving hall and try to get it all picked up and cleaned up before 10 and move on to other projects down in the basement so as usual these guys waste no time they're going to get moving well, I heard a giant bang. I thought Joe dropped the broom and I came in and a big chunk of plaster had fallen on the floor and hopefully not hurt anybody. But we had just talked about this the plaster. other day because these two little pieces fell out and I thought, you know, I need to get up there with the broom handle and bang on that and knock everything that's loose down. So apparently I'll be Hello? doing that today. Tell them again, where have you been? I went to go see the Eagles. Eagles, so this was our rocker, as I told you, Pat, but um, we're stopping window scraping and everything else. We have a bit of an urgent emergency safety issue. This is a little piece of plaster that fell out of the ceiling, and you can see that ceiling had collapsed before, but there's plaster stuck in between the laugh and a big wind kind of blew through here and knocked some out and this is not too big a deal but a minute ago a, a bigger piece came out and I had told Joe I was going to climb up there and bang on that with something and try to knock loose anything that's loose but Pat's going to help me it's going to make a mess so let's let's move our store out of the way <laughs> Slide it. Yeah, I was trying to pick it Slide it. There's no good handle on that. And let's move the couch that way because it will make. You want to tarp on the couch? No, we'll just move it in the dining room. It's on wheels, it's easy. <laughs> nice. And I'm going to take advantage of my beautiful hard hat that Millie sent me. Thank you. Comes in handy. <laughs> Put on my lovely bufu hair thing because as always, I just washed my hair last night. This always happens. <laughs> I don't wash my hair. But I'm going to and my safety glasses. And actually, hold on, I've got to um, Just gonna get that pretty tight so I don't uh, lose it when I. You oh. take your no, I can't get my safety glasses in there. I made it you so tight. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh that is, that's why you need safety glasses. <laughs> I was like, I am ready to I am, say something, but I said maybe she knows. I'm so used to wearing. Sometimes I go home, I put I, a, I put them on top of my head, and then I put another pair on. And put a, sometimes I go home and I have three pairs on top of my head, and I can't. I don't have my. I don't have my new ladder I was going to buy yet, so I can't get any higher than this because it will be ladder safety and i'll get in trouble with this but i usually don't go higher than this where i can lean this is not a step it tells you all the time but i don't view these two as steps either because i like to have something um I'm 
That's why you have a hard hat on. Yeah. Okay. And I like to hold on because I have get vertigo and if I tilt my head back it makes me dizzy. So actually when I'm on a ladder I'm hanging on. I'm not Heather. Well, this, this I'm away from it, so So the first thing that happens is these beams need to come down. They're fake beams. They don't support anything. If you see back behind Ricardo's head, <coughs> excuse me, there is a floor joist up there that's actually supporting the floor. So these beams are decorative and don't do anything. Now, when we took the ceiling down, we couldn't get it down in one piece. The wood was very brittle and in bad shape, but he's going to try to see if he can gently get this down and salvage it. So first he's going to use the chipping hammer and chip away the concrete stucco that's around the end of the wood to get it free. So that's going to be loud and noisy and dirty. So we brought carpet down from upstairs that was old to use it as a drop cloth to protect the floor and give it a little bit of a cushion in case something heavy falls. We don't want to chip our tile that Joe has so beautifully cleaned. It looks great. Does he want that? Does he want that second? Do you want that second scaffolding? No. No? It's good. Enough. Just turn it? Okay. So Ricardo and I have the same scaffolding. So if we need a second layer to get a little higher, he could put my set on top of this one and extend this up. Okay. He knows what he wants. He's already got a plan in his mind. And he did at least put on glasses and a mask. I'm guessing that there is a wood frame against the brick or the block that was used to build this addition. Is it loose? Did that make it loose already? So you think doing both ends it may just come down? Yeah. Okay. Well, do you want to put my other scaffolding here so you don't have to change? It's, uh -huh. it's in there by the fridge. Does Juan know where it is? Okay, maybe we're going to catch a break and this won't be too hard to get these beams down intact. That would be great because they have that decorative rope trim on there, which is plaster and it's very, very delicate. And it would be nice to get it down in one piece. So when we drop the ceiling below the plumbing, we can put these beams back to match the rest of the room. So since it came down so easy, they're going to get my scaffolding and put up on the other side. So Juan can be on one end, Ricardo can be on the other, and hopefully just lift that beam down. Because so I'm probably jinxing it by saying that it's going to be easy. Push the record button. The car is just going to try to pry his end down.
Do you want the Do you want the sledgehammer to to hit up on that? My bell's off looking for another crowbar. I was trying to saw it through the nails. I was thrilled this beam came down in one piece. The stucco was a little worse for the wear, but we already have to do a lot of patching of the stucco in this room anyway, and I'm really glad that we don't have to build or replace these beams. You can see when they get it down, it's not really a beam. It's just a decorative box dressed up to look like a beam, but still, it would be a lot of effort to try to match the wood and get this replaced. So if we can save it and reuse it, that's great. He's very, very gently trying to get our trim down. I'm shocked it's not shattering. The other one did not hold up so well when it came down. Is that wood or plaster? Wood. It's wood. Oh, the other was plaster. <laughs> okay. Well, that's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all that has to come down. He has to be able to get to the bottom of that bathtub. So, okay, that's shocking that it's wood because you can see this one that's broken here is plaster. And now that I look at it, it's actually a different design. This is a single rope twist. And the one that's over here has, I don't know if you can see it, has a large section and then a small section. When it's way up high on the ceiling like that, you can't see it. I wonder if this has been repaired before. So this may be a modern repair. I just save that. We might put that on a Christmas ornament. Okay. 
We have to take this down because the bathtub drain is directly under this wide piece. It's missing it. What was that big noise? <laughs> Just junk. Junk that was trapped up in the ceiling. And All right, I'm beyond astounded. These guys got this down in one piece. That is fabulous for when we go to put it up. But you can see now why we, why we needed it because that is the plumbing. So this was taken down once and repaired and put back up because that's modern PVC under there. So that's why that rope trim was different and wooden instead of the plaster that's on the original. So that'll make it really easy for David to get in there and get that plumbing fixed. I think that can stay. And actually, I think those other boards can stay if he wants to go up underneath them. We probably need to remove um, that against the wall over there just to be sure. And then the ceiling in that closet. That came down easier than I thought. Boom. Well, I'm glad I was a little slow getting my camera. <laughs> I would have been standing there. Oops. And that's what happened when we took it down before. That wood was very brittle and split, so not surprised. All right, Ricardo's got the door open, so you can see this is the ceiling that has to come down. And I hope nothing's above it, because the plumber needs access. This is directly below the sink in the pink bathroom, so he needs up and into the ceiling and into the wall to work on that sink drain. Sorry. Okay. So old. There's the sink. You can really see the exterior of the house. Got a big crack in the fireplace. Alright, the work is done. Now it's just the cleanup, but that's not too bad. There wasn't a whole lot of ceiling up there. A lot of dust. We've got the super fan blowing outside. Try to clear some of the dust. Maribel put up a tarp to try to keep it from going in the house. I'm sure it went up through here. Okay. It's time to clean up Ricardo. <laughs> Right? The wood, no, it. if they need to take it down, it can come down. Okay. They might be able to just whack it with a hammer and that stuff fall out, but I don't know. 
The ceiling right here is 13 feet tall, and that's a little too high for Ricardo standing just on one scaffolding. And it's nice that he and I have the same set of scaffolding because they can be modular and get stacked one on top of the other. And then you can adjust where the platform is and get it really to any height that you want so you can stand comfortably. So they took a little pause and set up the scaffolding and got everything just how they wanted it so he could work comfortably. Once Ricardo was up there and close to it and could really examine the lath and the plaster, it was very, very damaged. This area had a water lake for a long time. It's where the roof was missing up near the cupola and water has just flooded in for years, which is why the plaster fell in the first place. The plaster had been deteriorated from that water. So we went ahead and made the decision just to take all the plaster down and all the lath, that all of this is going to have to be redone. And the electrician also needs to get in here to run wiring. We will probably have to put some fire suppression piping in here. So we might as well get it all down and remove a, what I think is a big safety hazard. That plaster that fell earlier and hit me on the shoulder, it was a small piece, maybe three or four inches in diameter and it only fell a couple of feet before it hit me and it still left a pretty good size bruise so this is in effect concrete or something like concrete this this old plaster so it it weighs a lot and having it overhead and not knowing if it's stable or not is very worrisome so that was like do you think this one's loose? No way, but I think for safe, you better pick up. Take it down, yeah. yeah. I'd rather be safe. It's, yeah. Because it's cracked. It was all wet. Yep. Yeah, which makes it weak. Uh -huh. so, yeah, if you think it's unsafe, just get it out. did need to come 
down and it just does make me worry about some of the areas of the house where there may have been other water damage so there is a place in the bedroom where some plaster has fallen and I think it's from a previous roof leak but we will get up and do some more testing of the plaster there are some techniques to try to see if it's sound or not but it is something that you really have to worry about in these old houses you hear stories sometimes of whole rooms collapsing down so we want to be very very careful with this there was kind of an exciting find that I didn't realize right away but I came to appreciate over a few days of studying this area with the plaster gone and I'm just going to throw that tease out there until a future video when I can get up on the scaffolding and get some better footage and show you what I found. This took way longer than anticipated to complete and it made such a mess. I'm not even sure why we bothered to try to clean up from the little bit of demolition that was done over in the sunroom because this area was a disaster. This plaster dust went everywhere and it took all of us quite a while to clean up after it was all done. There were a couple of more projects I needed Ricardo to do but we just ran out of time today. And I know you guys are anxiously awaiting the installation of our big curved windows in the parlor alcove, but let me give you a little bit of explanation while we're cleaning up here. Um, we have had so much work going on. I have been down here seven days a week for several weeks trying to get these bathrooms done and everything done on the windows necessary to get them put in so there is a lot of footage and we only put out one video a week so I have everything just strung together in chronological order and I'm kind of editing and making videos as I move along that timeline but at this point where we are in the video you're watching now we are very very close to getting the windows in there's just a tiny bit of sash repair left to do and of course you know we will be down to the wire trying to get everything done but it is exciting to see so much work going on at the house and so much project and we still have a lot to do we have that roof grant from the Kempner fund I'm negotiating with roofers and trying to finalize that now so once we get the windows in and the bathrooms in then we'll turn right around and get to work on the roof so it has been a very very busy and productive year so hang with us there's more to come as we get this house closer to our end goal of fully restoring it and returning it to the great beauty that it was when it was built. So thanks for watching. We're the Lee Kempner House in Galveston, Texas. Be sure and follow us on Instagram and Facebook because we do put more contemporaneous updates on that to help people keep up with exactly when the work is getting done. So we'd love to see you following us over there too. So until next time, thanks for watching.